So today we're going to be learning how to make an interior within the Fallout New Vegas Gek. So obviously first thing you want to do is boot up your New Vegas Gek. Um, I use Gek Extender. Um, if you're still using the base New Vegas Gek, I would highly recommend switching to Extender. This thing just is a quality of life improvement. Uh, it's smoother, it's faster, a lot less crashes. Uh, a lot of the previous problems you would have with the normal Gek are fixed. So. Um, yeah, definitely get this if you're looking into uh, modding, I guess. Alright, so first things first, your data box is going to pop up, and that's going to be your ESM master files, and your ESPs, which is are your plugin files, which are the mods themselves. Depending on what you're going to be making, you'll choose your ESMs accordingly. So like, if I wanted to make a player home uh, that didn't have any DLC assets or DLC items, obviously I would only need to check the Fallout New Vegas ESM. However, most of the work I do uh, does have at least a couple DLC assets in it, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and click these. So that should be all you need to do if you're creating a new ESP. So you go ahead and click OK, and boom, your GEC's going to come up. Um, if you have the normal GEC, it might crash. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. That's why you get the extender. Now that everything's loaded in, before I start doing any work, a lot of times I will go and save it. And this is where you can name your ESP file. So let's just do uh, interior uh, YouTube or whatever. YouTube, YouTube, yes, that works for me. And that basically saves it into your New Vegas data files. So now your ESP itself is created and uh, you can get to work. So there's one of two ways we can approach creating an interior or a player home or whatever the hell you want to make. So I'll go ahead and show you the first way, which is creating an entirely new cell uh, from scratch, essentially. So you want to go up to World, Cells, and then you'll have this drop down list, right click, and New. This drop box will come up and you can do really whatever you want. So a uh, good tip, if you want something to appear on the top of the list, you can always do 01 or some sort of number because numbers will populate on top versus letters. So most of the time I'll do 01, breezy, house, home, YouTube, whatever. All right, and now you can see if I click name, 01 comes up. It's going to come up with numbers first, and this is the data for your interior. You can do... Uh, the acoustics, which is basically like background noise, um, so like right here if I were to pick interior INT Gamora, that'll have the background of Gamora. Image space is for the lighting and the colors. Um, let's do Atomic Wrangler image space, that's a good default one that I use quite a bit. Then we'll go over to lighting. Uh, lighting template, uh, we'll just go with Atomic Wrangler interior template. And any of these you can use, uh, really, honestly, if you were to finish your interior and you want to play around with different ones, you can. It's going to change the lighting of the cell itself. Uh, if you're a lighting horror like me, I, I really like to find the best lighting possible. So playing around with these is a good option if, you, if, you're, if you're like me and you're OCD as shit. You don't always have to copy these exactly. So the ambient, the fog, the directional, all these, you don't always have to. Um, you can. It, it will it will affect how the cell looks in-game. A lot of times what I'll do is I will go to an existing cell that I really like the lighting of, and then I just basically will copy the same settings here. Um, but you don't have to do that. If you're just trying to make a simple interior, you don't got to do any of that. So Interior data. This happens sometimes. It just decides to have a stroke on you. Um, there we go. And then uh, this is where you'll actually make the interior name for your cell. So when you go to the door or whatnot, it'll say press E or press F to enter whatever you name it. So Breezy House. Oh, God, I cannot type today. Breezy House works for me. And then you can go ahead and click Apply. Okay. And so now your cell should be created. Uh, you can go down uh, on the cell view list. Let's see, Breezy House should be in here. All right, boom, there it is. Uh, it's right here. Obviously, there's nothing in it yet, but your cell's created. So if we wanted to start building something from scratch, I always do this, File, Preferences, and it'll come up to Snap to Grid and Snap to Angle. Snap to Angle is basically rotating your objects, and uh, it'll rotate it at a 45-degree angle. 
at a time, snap to grid, uh, really just helps with piecing actual parts of homes or interiors together. It's a pain in the ass if you don't have this clicked and I would not recommend doing that. So always have this snapped, snap to grid enabled if you're, if you're making the layout of an interior. The next thing we're gonna do is go down to static and then let's just do wall. We'll find any random wall. Let's do, uh, let's do fact room wall, 01. Okay, boom, that's our wall is placed. And then from here, you can press A on your keyboard and that's essentially gonna lighten everything up in the cell. And then something else I always do is set uh, the original piece or the first piece I put in the cell. I always set it to the coordinates of zero uh, X, Y, and Z. So you can double click and then change all of these to zero, zero, why is there two? There it is, zero, okay. You can go back to your cell view. You can find it right here, double click. Boom, you're back and you are ready to go. Now you're ready to start building. So a fact room wall is this one. So we wanna find a corner wall. And I've gone over to my object window and the filter. So do fact room corner, should be something like that. Um, find any of these, whichever you like. And then boom, there's our corner. We can right click and rotate. If you have the 45 degree angle uh, set, then it makes this a whole lot easier. You can go ahead and control D. That will duplicate this object. And then you can go over here, rotate, and snap it in there. There you go. That, that looks like a home so far to me. And then say I wanted to duplicate this wall and put it over here. Control D, drag it over, rotate it, snap it into place. And then we'll put uh, one of these corners right here. Rotate, boom. And then obviously you're gonna want some sort of entrance. So we'll go over to our object window and find some sort of exit. Okay, yeah, I found it as fact room. I deleted the corner. You can go down and find fact room corner in exit small. Let's try this one out. And that one looks like it'll work. So we can go ahead and put this here. Also, if you want something to be on the same level um, as your other pieces, you can say it's like higher. You can just do F on your keyboard and it'll drop it down to the same level. And go ahead and drop it off like that and boom. So now all we need is a door to this place. We can go down to door on our object window and find a door that seems to fit. Uh, different doors are for different doorways, obviously. So not all of them will fit. Some of them you can kind of adjust the size and fit. Let's see if we can find a door, wood, sh wood shack door. Um, oh God, imagine if we just put this piece of shit on there. There we go. <laughs> it's good to go, boys. Nah, just kidding. Uh, but if you have an item that you want to get rid of, uh, do control X on your keyboard and boom, the shitty door is gone. You can do that with any item. Uh, let's do it. Let's fuck it. Let's do it to this wall. Control X. Boom. The corner is gone. If you want to undo that, do Control Z and it's back. Trust me, if you're going to be using the GEC, you will be needing those uh, keyboard shortcuts quite a bit. I can almost promise you. So Control X, Control Z, A, F. Um, those are things you're probably going to use quite a bit if you're if you're going to try to start getting into this. So I've gone over. It looks like off door SML01. Looks like this might fit. Uh, just appears to be the normal wooden door. So let's slide this over and boom, it works. Beautiful. I've never seen an interior more beautiful in my life. So the next thing you want to do is add some lighting. Uh, you don't have to do it right now. You can always like decorate the interior, do whatever you want, then add the lighting later. A lot of times I'll do that just depending on what the, the atmosphere or the overall vibe of the interior is. I'll wait for the lighting, but we'll go ahead and do it right now. So you can come to your object window, go down to light, and that'll come up with all of your lighting options. And let's just go with like basement, basement light fill warm. And if this doesn't appear, if the light bulb doesn't appear, you can do M on your keyboard and that will basically enable and disable any markers. Uh, what the fuck just happened? There it is, okay. <laughs> I don't know what just happened, but yeah. Yeah, do M to enable and disable uh, lighting markers or basically any other markers in your interior. Let's go ahead and just drop this bad boy 
right in here. Let's put it by the door, put one by the door first. Now our lighting is placed. Um, you can go ahead and click A on your keyboard and that's gonna disable the, the overall lighting you had. And you can press F5 and that is going to enable the preview of your lighting. So I'm gonna want a couple of these throughout the, the room to, to lighten it up. So you can do control D, go ahead, place another one, and then let's just, let's do like three. And then F5, boom, we have light now. So theoretically, if I wanted uh, brighter lights, I could always go find a different one that is brighter, or I can hold S while a light is selected, and then left click, and essentially that will make it bigger. I don't know why it's not showing up. We'll press F5 and, oh, that's way too much. Okay, so we're gonna press S and then make it smaller. Normally there's like a bulb, like a radius where you can, where you can see. I don't know why it's not selected. I'll need to honestly check my settings, but for you it should show up. There we go. We have our dark ass office interior. But yeah, pretty much from here, you're free to really do anything you want with this. Uh, if you wanna add furniture, we can go down to furniture. Let's add in, uh, add in a bed. Uh, that's a quest object. Let's not do that one. Let's do this one. That's a quest object too. Never mind. Let's <laughs> just add this one. Queen bed. All right. We'll just do this. Uh, press F to drop it down to the main level. Press A to lighten it up. And then when you're decorating the interior, you can always turn off, go to preferences, turn this off. That way you can like freely move stuff around without it snapping around. So is that a bed there? Oh shit. There we go. And then let's add a couch. Add a couch right in here, drag and drop. And boom. So yeah, yeah, oh shit, that's on the roof. Yeah. So yeah, and then place it anywhere you want. Uh, you have an entire game's worth of objects and things you can use. Furniture to static items, stuff like that. You wanna decorate, everything's in here. All you gotta do is drag and drop. Um, but yeah, that's how you make an interior from scratch. Everything else is up to you on how you wanna do it and how you wanna decorate. Obviously, you can use any assets in the game. Anything that is currently in the game you can use all right then you're also going to want to link your door to an exterior cell that we can walk in and out of it um so we'll go ahead and do that real quick so you're going to want to find a place obviously where you want to put the entrance to your house so we can go over to wasteland new vegas uh i will just do what's the first thing that shows up right, let's just do aerotech office park all right, so now we're in an exterior world space so we'll just throw down a random door obviously um, if you're gonna link this to a place, you'd put it in a building or a house or whatnot, but just for the sakes of the video, I'm just gonna throw a random door down. Okay, we'll just do like Doc Mitchell door or something. There we go. And let's throw this bad boy down right there. Our portal into another world right here. So now we just need to link the door to our interior cell. So a lot of times what I'll do is double click this and this dialog box will pop up leave this open and we can go back to our interior cells find our home right here we'll go inside and then now that we have the door right here we can go back to the dialog box from the original do exterior door that we did click teleport select reference in render window and then obviously as you can see when i'm not on the door this marker is red and then when I go over to the door it's white so we want to click that and boom it is linked we'll press OK press M to show your markers and this will show the, um, the entrance marker and we can just go ahead and drag it you always want to do that because if you walk through uh, it'll spawn you like in the middle of the door so this is the direction you're gonna be facing when you enter the cell and you can double click the door view link to door there we are, and then you can fix this one too. So just drag it over here, boom. And that's all there is to it, really. Uh, now your doors are linked and you can freely travel in between the exterior cell and the interior cell.
Uh, now I will show you how to duplicate an interior and if you want to use that to make your own. So next thing, if you don't want to make an interior from scratch, what you can do is go and find it a pre-existing cell and actually duplicate it. So let's go over to your cell view and then you can, let's find one, let's find a good one. We'll do, let's see, Gibson Garage. Okay, we'll do this one. So basically go to the cell you want to duplicate. You can right click duplicate cell and it'll have popped up right here obviously Gibson scrapyard interior copy zero 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 it might show duplicate you can go over here any item boom we are in the cell this is the duplicated version make sure you go over here and you can click on the ID and rename it or whatever you want to do or make sure you know which adjustments you're gonna be doing you don't want to be accidentally editing the base game cell and screw up anything that might be related to base game. So let's just rename this Gibson, oh Bison, what the fuck? Breezy Gibson, that works for me. And then you can right click this, go to edit, and you can change the, uh, the name of it. So, Big Daddy Garage works for me. And then boom, it's gonna go up uh, once you click on this. I like how I spelled that wrong. But yeah, so this is the duplicated version. And then you're free to add, remove, press M, see the markers. This is, I think that's quest related. Since this is a duplicated version, you can just delete this. Uh, audio marker but yeah you're free to do anything in here and your cell is duplicated if you want to go and rearrange things if you want to rearrange the layout you can um, all you got to do is move things around so it's really up to your discretion I just want to show you guys how to make an interior itself I know there's a lot of people that want to get into doing Gek. Oh, and one more thing always make sure you save because the Gek is known for crashing. So you get done doing a couple changes, make sure you save your ESP and you will be able to find the ESP in your New Vegas and in your data files. But anyways, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'll be trying to do a couple more of these over basic stuff. Uh, if you guys would like to see me make an actual interior, uh, one that would be going up on the New Vegas multiplayer mod, uh, just let me know in the comments and I might, uh, might record some some sessions and and splice it together and throw something cool together. Maybe you guys could get some inspiration or I don't know, throw some ideas together and whatnot. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys in the next one. Good night.